Hi, I'm Mr. Simons. Welcome back to our limited series look at monetary policy, what it is and how it's implemented in the Australian economy. So in the previous videos, we've had a look at what monetary policy is and also how economics textbooks typically explain the process of setting and changing the cash rate by the Reserve Bank of Australia. Something we touched on in the last video is that this textbook explanation is not how it actually happens in the real world. So in this video, we're gonna look at how monetary policy is actually changed in the real world. Now, this is gonna be a bit tricky, so make sure you've done the other videos, make sure you've watched the other videos before you get stuck into this. So you've got all the foundation knowledge that will make this a little bit easier to grasp. In terms of where I've got this information from, it's drawn heavily from material produced by the RBA itself and links to all of those resources will be in the description. So let's get stuck into it. So how does the RBA actually achieve the value it wants for the cash rate? Well, it doesn't set a precise value and then bang, there it is. What it does is it sets a target and then works to achieve that target value in the Australian cash market. Let's look at how that happens. Um, in terms of explaining this, I'll briefly go over some of the fundamentals, but if there's anything here in this introductory part that's unclear, make sure you go back to videos one and two to get that extra information. All right, let's go to the virtual whiteboard. So here we are in the Australian cash market. And just to remind ourselves, the Australian cash market is the market where Australia's commercial banks settle debts with each other. So that's for the transactions that take place between all of the banks on a daily basis. So here we are in the cash market. This is the RBA's um, graph of what it looks like. If we look here that the supply of funds in this market, that that's set by the RBA. And because it is the RBA setting it at a fixed amount, it is a vertical line. So we can just call that, let's just call that Q1. That's the quantity of funds in the Australian cash market. The demand for funds, however, that this comes from Australia's commercial banks. So these banks have accounts known as exchange settlement accounts in the Australian cash market. They use these funds to settle transactions with each other, to settle those debts with each other. So we'll just put this down that this Australia's commercial banks, they have these exchange settlement accounts. If banks need some extra funds to settle their debts with each other, they can borrow from other banks or from the RBA itself. Likewise, if the banks have got some extra funds, some surplus funds, they can lend this to other banks or save this money with the RBA. Okay, so let's take the next step now. We'll focus on this graph now and let's focus on this line here. Okay, so I've highlighted this in orange. We'll highlight this here too, just to match it up. So the dotted line in the middle with the orange highlight is the RBA's target cash rate. This is what the RBA wants Australia's cash rate to be. Now let's check out the line above with the green highlight. So this is the highest price in the market. This is the RBA's lending rate. And the lending rate here, can you see it says plus 0.25 PPT. So I've just got a little asterisk here. And if you follow the asterisk up to the top here, go all the way over here, what it's saying is that this is equivalent to the cash rate plus 0.25 basis points. So for example, if the cash rate R say equals 1.5%, then the lending rate in the Australian cash market would be 1.75%. So it is 25 basis points higher. This lending rate is the price commercial banks pay when they borrow money from the RBA. So let's say one bank is short on funds when they're trying to settle debts. They need to borrow some money. If they choose to borrow it from the RBA, they will need to pay the cash rate plus 25 basis points. So here, if we think about the lending rate, essentially what we're saying is we're saying this is the this is the cost of borrowing funds from the RBA. I'll put this in green just so we can uh, make the connection with it. 
So if a bank is short on funds and they owe another bank the money, they can borrow it from the RBA, but they will have to pay 25 basis points higher than the cash rate target. So this other dotted line, which is the lowest price in the market, you can see the lending rate is the highest price. This is the lowest price. This is the RBA's deposit rate, the RBA's deposit rate. And you can see here that rather than being plus 20.25, here it is minus 0.25. So if we go down here, what we're saying is that this deposit rate is equivalent to the cash rate or R minus 0.25 basis points. So that in our example above, if we say that R equals 1.5%, then the deposit rate will equal 1.25%. So it is lower in the market. So what are we talking about with the deposit rate? Well, this is the reward commercial banks get if they deposit surplus exchange settlement balances with the RBA. So what we're saying here is we'll just put a little A here and bring this over here, that this deposit rate is the reward. So this is the reward for banks for depositing surplus funds with the RBA. So the lending rate is the cost, the deposit rate is the reward. And I'll just put that in blue so we can again make that connection. So if we start to put all of this together, and I'll just put this in, uh, what haven't we used yet? Just put this in a red here, that if we've got here that this, this point here, that this is the highest price in the market, and this here is the lowest price. So these dotted lines create this space in between these two things. And you can see it outlined with this arrow up and down here, what I'll do is I'll just put this in yellow to signify the other part here, is that this distance between the highest price and the lowest price, okay, this is called the RBA's policy interest rate corridor. This is the kind of the distance or the area in which monetary policy actually occurs. So between the highest and lowest price in the market, okay, that's where monetary policy takes place between the green line here and the blue line down here. Okay, let's move on to the next part. So let me give you the message before we get into it. All of the transactions in the Australian cash market move towards the middle of the policy interest rate corridor. They move towards the target cash rate that the RBA has announced. In this way, the RBA achieves its goal of the cash rate being the level it has set it at. But how does this actually happen? Well, let's get into the explanation. Okay, so here we are back at the Australian cash market. So with the graph we were just looking at before, uh, everything's highlighted in the same colors. So we've got the cash rate target here in the middle. We've got the lending rate. So remember, this is the cost to banks if they want to borrow money from the RBA. And this is the highest price in the market. And then we've got the deposit rate. And you might recall that that is the reward banks get if they deposit their surplus funds with the RBA in the cash market. And that this is the lowest price in the market. And that here we've got that policy interest rate corridor, that monetary policy occurs in between these two points in the Australian cash market. Let's go through a couple of ideas here. So the first thing to think about is number one here. Let's just grab a yellow highlighter. The first thing is that commercial banks have no incentive to borrow funds at an interest rate higher than the RBA's lending rate. So what we're saying here is that if a bank needs to borrow, why would it borrow at a rate above this? It would be silly to do that. Why would you borrow funds at a higher rate if you don't have to? 
The consequence here is that no transactions in Australia's cash market go above the RBA's lending rate. And remember, the lending rate is the cash rate plus 25 basis points. So that this here, that nothing goes above this line. This is the highest price in the market because you would be silly as a bank to go and borrow money for a rate above this if you know you can just get it from the RBA at this value. Okay, so that's on the borrowing side. Let's have a look at the lending side then. So this is our second idea here, is that commercial banks have no incentive to accept a deposit rate lower than the one offered by the RBA. So what we're saying is that if you're a bank, that is the lowest deposit rate that you should accept. Why would you get something lower if you can get that value here? So what we're saying here, or the question we are posing, is why would banks accept a lower interest rate if they don't have to? Why would they do that? So what is the consequence of this? Okay, so no transactions in the Australian cash market go below the RBA's deposit rate, which is the cash rate minus 25 basis points. So just as no transactions go above the lending rate, no transactions will go below the deposit rate. So that in the Australian cash market, all transactions occur plus or minus 25 basis points of the target cash rate. So the target cash rate sits in the middle. The highest point is 25 basis points above and the lowest point is 25 basis points below. So no transactions occur above or below the corridor. All market activity in the Australian cash market takes place within the corridor. So the cash rate target is achieved because all transactions take place in that middle part of the policy interest rate corridor. How does this happen? Okay, so let's say that a bank has surplus funds in its ES account. So it has more money than it needs to settle debts with other banks. So the bank would like to get the highest rate of return on these surplus funds. To get the highest rate of return, they will always deposit these funds with other banks. Because if you recall in the Australian cash market, the RBA's cash deposit rate is the lowest price in the market. So why would a bank deposit funds and get the lowest possible rate? Instead, the commercial bank with surplus funds, it will ignore the RBA's deposit rate and go to other banks that will offer higher returns for that savings. So let's flip the situation. Let's say that a bank has insufficient funds in their ES accounts. So they need to borrow money to settle their debts with other banks. Now they could borrow money from the Reserve Bank of Australia, but if you think about the Australian cash market, the RBA's lending rate is the highest price in the market. Why would a bank and go and get the most expensive loan possible? Well, it wouldn't. So rather than borrow from the RBA and pay the highest price in the market, the commercial bank will go and borrow funds from other commercial banks and get a rate that is below the RBA's lending rate. So what does all this mean? It means that lending transactions will take place below the highest point. They will move towards the middle because commercial banks don't want to pay the highest rate on their loans that they have to. Instead, they want to go seek out cheaper loans not from the RBA, but from other banks. So the lending rate transactions will move down. In terms of the saving rates, commercial banks don't want the lowest deposit rate, they want higher ones. So their transactions will move higher towards the middle in terms of the savings and deposit side. And so the price of transactions moves higher from the bottom, lower from the top and towards the middle. The price of transactions move towards the RBA's target cash rate. Just have a look at this graph. It shows how the actual cash rate deviates from the target cash rate. Not much variation at all. So in this video, we've looked at the process of how the RBA actually changes the value of the cash rate. The important thing to note is to change the value of the cash rate, the RBA does not use domestic market operations or open market operations as the textbooks suggest. Yes, the RBA uses DMO and OMO in another context, but not to actually set or change the value of the cash rate. 
Instead, the RBA uses the policy interest rate corridor. This idea that transactions will move from the top and the bottom to the middle and exactly that rate that the RBA wants the cash rate to be in the Australian cash market and the Australian economy. So all transactions occur around that target cash rate level. Okay, so a fair amount to get your head around in this video. Any questions, clarifications, comments, praise, always like praise, please put them in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching.